Okay, this last section of chapter six, so we're gonna have a little little fun today. We're gonna go from normal distribution to binomial distributions. We're gonna kinda talk about a binomial situation and using a normal curve to actually find the answer. So it, it's kind of a, a different way to combine different distributions. Um, just to remember binomial from last chapter, the whole two ideas, a success, failure, they're independent. Um, they, you need a success, you need a P, a N, R, P, Q, and then you need your table and stuff. We had the, the N from 2 all the way up to 20 table that we looked at all the time. Um, so here's a binomial situation. You flip a coin. Okay, so if you're flipping a coin, let's say we're going to toss it 20 times, and that's a nice number because we can find that in our table uh, and, and probably get an answer to this question. Um, what's the probability that you toss exactly 10 heads? So if we go back to Chapter 5's idea, we know that N is 20... We know P is 0 0.50. We're looking for exactly 10. If you go into your, your NCR table, your combination different table, um, you would end up finding out that there's a 0 0.1760 chance uh, of doing that. Okay. Now that's if the N is nice. So what's happening in these binomial situations, why a normal curve is helpful is because we're not always going to have the nice table to deal with it and these ends are going to get obnoxious so what's going to happen is you might want to do this a hundred times which you don't have a nice table for that and let's say I want to find what's the probability out of a hundred that you get fifty or more if that's the case you would have to do your formula like we did in that calculator lab from fifty all the way to a hundred you'd have to do it fifty one times I don't think you're going to want to do that okay so here's where the normal curve comes into play the area is the rectangle above the numbers that you want. So think about this as this is the probability of getting exactly heads. We need to think about it as a rectangle. Because what's going to happen, we're going to go from a discrete number, 10, and if we're going to use the normal approximation, which is a continuous variable, we're going to have to make what we ca call an interval. Okay, and we're going to end up making a rectangle. And for those of you that are in calculus, this is kind of like an integral in a way we're gonna basically figure out all the different um, rectangles or the probabilities to do so okay so under certain conditions um, if something is normal how does this work how do I use a binomial experiment and use the normal curve to do it one situ well, I guess it's two things but it's the same idea the only way this happens you need an n large enough so that when you multiply it by your P and your Q both of them must be greater than 5. This is what they figured out to be approximated by the normal distribution. When you go n times p and n times q, they must be greater than 5. If this ever does not happen, you cannot, I repeat, cannot use the normal curve. You would stop. You'd say this is not possible for the normal curve. We cannot do this. If both of these things are true, we can proceed. Okay, and then the binomial thing still runs. Your, how do you find your mean? n times p. How do you find your standard deviation? Square root of n times p times q. And there are pictures in the book that kind of give you a nice visual of, of why that when n increases that the normal curve improves, but we're not. So let's go back to flipping the head, flipping the coin 20 times thing, and we're going to find out the probability of getting exactly 10 heads using this normal distribution. Okay, just as a simple example. Is this distribution approximately normal? To do this is n times p what is n times p? 20 times 0.5. That's 10. Super. Is n times q? Also 20 times 0.5 in this problem. 10. Since they are both greater than 5, when we can proceed, we can do this. And if you can do this, then we need to do these following steps. I need to know, in order to find a z-score, these two pieces of information. So what I need to calculate now is my mean. Well, guess what? You already do that by checking to see if we can proceed. N times P, so I know N times P again, 20 times 0.5 is 10. So my average, my expected value is 10. Okay. And then what is my standard deviation? Square root N times P times Q. We've all done this before. So 20 times 0.5 times 0.5. So half of 20 is 10, half of 10 is 5, square root of 5 is, I wrote this down, 
2.236. You could go 2.24 if you wanted to, but I'm going to use 2.236 today. All right. So that's what you need those two pieces of information. Now, in order to find a z-score, this is the only thing that's different from getting to z-scores before. We are going into a different um, variable. We're going from a discrete, I want 10 heads, to using the normal distribution. So we're changing to a continuous table. Um, it's a little bit different. So we have what we call continuity correction. Okay. We're converting from one distribution to another. This is not an exact science, so we need a little leeway. This continuity correction gives us a little bit of a buffer zone to be a little bit off. Now, in order to do this, you will subtract 0.5 from the left and add 0.5 to the right. So in the scenario of wanting exactly 10 heads, I'm going to go a half to the left and a half to the right. I'm going to build an interval from 9.5 to 10.5. Okay? So that's the only thing that's going to be different. If you have a binomial situation and we're going to make it and use it in a normal scenario, we can do this. Partly the reason this is nice is finding the mean and standard deviation is really easy. But we're going to find in width. What this width refers to, excuse me, is this rectangle. So now we're going to go from 9.5 to 10.5. I'm going to find the area of that rectangle using a z-score. Okay, and this actually isn't that bad at all. Once you establish your your interval, this becomes really simple. Because we know now, or still know, that my mean, my mu was 10, and my standard deviation was 2.236. So I need to find a z-score for the left and a z-score for the right. So for the left one, maybe z-score left, if you want to denote it, 9.5 is my x, subtract my mean, Divide by my standard deviation. I end up, if you do the top and then divide, you get negative 0.22. To find the z-score for maybe the right one, it'd be the 10.5 minus 10 over 2.236. And you end up coincidentally getting, maybe not coincidentally, but I don't really want to talk about this. I think it's easier if we stay consistent that the right one is a positive 0.22. What does this mean? Instead of finding the probability of the raw score, I'm now going to use my z scores. My standard deviations away. I want to find the probability that I have negative 0.22 z score to a positive 0.22 z score. If you think about this in picture form, some of you are visual learners. Just about broke my neck as I. Okay, I need to find a different color. My means in the middle. Here's my negative 0.22 z-score. Maybe this one's my positive 0.22 z-score. And I need to find, I want to be between these two. So the area in between. So you can find the positive 0.22 z-score in your z-table, your pink table. I would go ahead and find that. And that number is 0.58. 7, 1, if I found that correctly. So that would be the positive one. Subtract the negative probability from your table, which is 0 0.4129. So the probability that you get exactly 10 heads according to your normal distribution table is 0 0.1742. That's an approximation. Your continuity correction is going to cause you to have a little bit of error. The exact answer from the very first slide we did was the 0.1760. I'm gonna pretty close. You're not even a percent off. So that's a lot easier. Now you're gonna be like, oh, we can just use the, the, the table that we looked at it from. Well, it's not that easy because it's not always gonna be in that table. So here's an example of where you would not want to go through each individual step. So let's say if 22% of all patients with high blood pressure have side effects from a certain medication. 100 patients are treated. What's the probability that at least 30 of them will have side effects? Okay, so they have side effects or they don't. So this is a binomial situation. Awesome. Now what I want to know is at least 30. So if I think about it, what's the probability that x is greater than or equal to 30? Now that does not work for me and my 
normal distribution table because I need less than 30. So that's what we're talking about, the complement. So instead of adding up each one individually, which if you wanted to do this with the long way, you'd have to use your table 30, then 31, then 32, like our calculator lab in Chapter 5. So we don't want to do this. So instead, I could say that, you know what, I'm going to go 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to, well, that's pretty ugly, 29. So I want 29 or less, and then I'm going to subtract it. Okay? We'll talk about that in a second. First of all, we need to set up, since it is binomial, what's my n? How many people are there? 100. What's my p? Okay, what's the probability of a success? And in this problem, it's going to be 0.22. And then my R, that's what we just talked about. I want 30 or more, but I'm going to do the complement, so it's going to be 29 or less, and I'll get to that in a second. Before we even get there, it, can we use a normal distribution? So N times P, 100 times 0.22, 22. N times Q, 100 times, well, I forgot to put Q up here, it's 0 0.78, 0 0.78, 78. They're both greater than 5. Smiley face. We can proceed. Find the mean and standard deviation. You just found the mean. The mean is 22. N times P is 22. Now the standard deviation, you'll have to calculate that square root of n times p times q so square root of 100 times 0.22 times 0.78 is 4.14 now I need to find a z-score now I'm gonna do the complement I want 30 or more but you know what that's not gonna be very easy because I want less than so I'm gonna do it right now Probability that x is less than or equal to 29. What you need to think about is we always need that, that buffer zone. Now I need to add or subtract if it was an interval or finding an exact value. Now I'm finding the probability that x is less than or equal to 29. So if I think about a curve, you know, it's going to be 29 and to the left. You need to give yourself a buffer zone. That's pretty ugly and really small. What I mean by that is if I'm looking at a number and I need it to the left, my buffer zone needs to be bigger than it. And I always add 0.5. So what I actually need in this problem is x is greater than or equal to 29 and a half. That's what we actually need to find because we're going from a binomial to a normal. So I always need to have the 0.5 scenario and think about it as go away from what we want. I want less than 29, so I need to go bigger than it. Get a little bit more. I on or you know, you, you go on the side of the side of caution on this. So that's the magic number. So to find your Z score, I'll find a different color. Z will equal 29.5 because of the buffer minus your mu over your standard deviation of 4.14 that will give a z-score if you do this calculation of 1.81 okay so then if you go to your z-table the z-score of 1.81 is going to give you a probability of 0.9649 Okay, so that is the probability. Now I'm going to grab a different color here, maybe straight black or something. If I can do this curve ever so slightly here. Z-score of 1.81 is the area to the left of my 29.5 I go back to it. Or my Z-score of 1.81 is that number. Now going back to the problem, I don't want to know the number less than. I actually need 30 or more at least. So here it goes back to the complement. I was going to go 1 minus the probability that we just found. So my actual answer is going to be 1 minus this probability. And you will end up getting for your answer 0 0.0351.
So just over 3%, okay, with the high blood pressure, have side effects from certain medication, higher or treated, find the probability that at least 30 of them will have side effects. Only about 3%, um, 3 chance that at least 30 of them will because the probability of it happening is relatively small. So that's your ability to use a binomial problem, use the normal curve to solve it in a relatively quick and simple way. So we will do a couple more of those in class. Just to remember, before you start, calculate NP and NQ. It will be in your best interest. And then always, always, always use the continuity correction, the plus or minus 0.5 idea when approximating a binomial distribution. So here's your homework. You guys have a wonderful day.